So we figured out who was the best forward, the best defenseman, the best goaltender. We figured out MVP. But who's the best surprise on the team? Who has the most fun media presence? Who has the best hair? And most importantly, who is the best team dog? We're going to be answering all of these questions in today's part two of the Locked On Blue Jackets end of season awards. Locked On Blue Jackets, your daily podcast on the Columbus Blue Jackets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Blue Jackets, you're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am, as always, your host, Jay Hoster. Thank you for being here with me on this wonderful uh, Friday evening-ish. And uh, if this is your first listen of the day, then I appreciate you. If this is your last listen of the day, I also appreciate you. Locked On Blue Jackets is free and available and always will be. There is no paywall to watch or listen. You can find us on all podcast platforms and also over on YouTube. So yesterday we went through a bunch of the uh, the usual suspects for best uh, best thing in the team. So we did, you know, best forward, defenseman, goaltender. We did MVP. Uh, we did best newcomer, things like that. Today uh, we've got a couple more uh, awards to go through. These ones are a little bit more, a little bit more fun shall we say. Uh, so we'll kick it off with uh, the best returning player. And this one, again, I got a lot of really good responses. And I think it was, um, I think this was a, one of those categories where you have a lot of options to choose from, because I think basically everyone on the team that was on the team last year had a better season than they did last year. Like a ton of guys hit their career high in points and uh, ice time and just all kinds of things. I think basically everyone on the team was better than they were last year if they'd been here last year. Obviously, the Blue Jackets were like 70% rookie this season, but, uh, you know, Boone Jenner had such a comeback year. Um, Patrick Laine obviously came out with a bang about in about December after, you know, coming back from injury. He, I think, probably would have been my pick for most approved returning player. Um Kind of a sleeper pick on the poll, and this is the guy that we talked about um, in the best defenseman contest or question yesterday, and that's uh, Andrew Peake, who got the most votes by uh, quite a lot, honestly. Um, Andrew Peake went from playing, I think he played 19 total games last season, that's NHL and AHL combined. This season, he was one of two players to play all 82 games uh averaged above 20 20 minutes a game uh was like i said the only he's the only defenseman to play in all of the games he was the only defenseman to stay healthy uh had career year in terms of basically every metric uh points goals assists he only scored two goals on the season but uh you know it's i'm not looking at andrew peak to be a goal scoring machine honestly and the you know, he didn't get a ton of points. Uh, he had 15 points in 82 games. But I'm I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, he only had three assists in 11 games last season. He had three points in 22 games the season before that. So this was really his first full season. I don't technically know that he counted as a rookie. Uh, the, the rookie rules are a little bit weird. But for a guy that had played 33 total games and had six points the previous two seasons combined for him to come into this season, play all 82 games and also hit 15 points for a guy that is basically, uh, and we're going to talk about someone, what someone said in, uh, in the next question. Um, he kind of filled that David Savage like role where, yeah, you're not expecting him to score a bunch of goals. Um, He's kind of, he's turned into what I expected uh, to get from Vladislav Gabrikov. And obviously Vladislav Gabrikov has turned into a much more offensive threat than I think anyone really realized. Um, Andrew Peake is, I think, more along the lines of a David Savard. Um, he will play a million minutes. I don't know that he's going to be 
as effective as other defensemen. I don't think he is that top two guy that he kind of spent most of the season being just by dint of everyone else being injured or a child. Um, you know, there was a point at which he was the the second oldest player on the defense court, and he's, what, like 23? He's 24. So, yeah, I think that, that probably says says a little bit about... Uh, about Andrew Peak, just uh, just in general, I will note as well for his two goals, uh, he shot. He was shooting at just under three percent this season. So uh, you know, I think that kind of says that kind of says all. I would imagine a more offensive season next season as his shooting percentage maybe starts to creep up a little bit closer to league average. But uh, yeah, best returning player. I think it has to be it has to be Andrew Peak. Um, and this leads really nicely into uh, my next question, which I'm going to do all of the answers for because I got a bunch. Well, I'm going to do m- uh, most of the answers, I think, uh, because, again, I got a lot of different responses. So I asked people what their surprise of the season was, um, and I asked them to specify whether it was a good or a bad surprise. Um And some of the some of the highlights, uh, Cole Sillinger was a good surprise, Nick Blankenberg was a good surprise. Um, one of my favorites was, um, and I know this was my, my good friend, Katie, uh, a friend of the show, a listener. Um, her good surprise was that Brad Larson was not a bad coach, uh, which is just, I don't know, it just, that made me laugh. Um, and then apart from those three, the rest of them, uh, Andrew Peake was the surprise of the season. Um, one who I, uh, Someone just said Andrew Peak, good. Andrew Peak morphing into Savard 2.0, which we uh, which we kind of covered. And uh, this was this was a personal favorite of uh, of mine for good surprise. And it was uh, Madigan. I assume this was Madigan. Uh, if Madigan is listening, please please at me on Twitter about whether this is actually you because I suspect that it is. Uh, Andrew Peak really grew on me this season. Took me by surprise. Played really well when he was given a good amount of ice time. Uh, he blocked shots and did everything Larson asked him to do. And I think, yeah, that's really, he did the most he could do, you know? And I think, again, he's not the most dynamic player on the team. He's not the most offensive player on the team. He's not going to be a top two defenseman. Um, Honestly, I would be happy with, I would be happiest with him on the third pairing. Um, But I don't know how the, how the defense pairings are going to shuffle around next season um we'll probably talk about that in in a later episode like off the top of my head i think i would like uh warinsky and oquist and then um uh, gavikov and blankenberg maybe on the second line and then jake bean and andrew peak on the third line and i know i'm forgetting a vital defenseman but i can't remember who it is right now so that's just my knee-jerk reaction i don't know the andrew peak is a top a top pairing guy but like everyone, uh, including Madigan, said, he, when he was given the chance, he played really well. I do think he played too much, but considering he was the only 100% healthy defenseman, I think I'm, yeah, I'm I'm happy with, happy with his season. I'm happy with how it went. Uh, I'm looking for him to have an even bigger season next season, honestly. Um, in a minute, we are going to talk a little bit more about uh, the future and next season and, uh, who we're most excited for next season. Uh, But first, I've got to tell you about Built Bar because, you know, summer is on the way. And if you want a snack in the sun, then Built Bar is the perfect snack for you to take on uh, family vacations, to take on hikes. I know I'm going on a hike in uh, June and I will be taking as many Built Bars as I can fit in my backpack because they are portable, they are delicious, they are nutritious. You don't have to sacrifice delicious food for health. With Built Bar, you can have both. And it's super easy. All you have to do is go to built.com and order now. Built bars uh, contain, well, most of the built bars contain 130 calories, four grams of sugar, four net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. Uh, Compare that to uh, your average candy bar, which usually has about 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, and just so many carbs, all of the carbs. 
but uh, Built.com doesn't really have any of that. It's got everything you need and a little bit more. So we've got a Built.com to get all of your favorites. There's banana cream pie, there's raspberry, there's double chocolate, there's so many more, and new flavors are coming out all the time. So check them out at Built.com, and here's the best bit. If you use promo code LOCKED15, you can get 15% off your order. Once again, that is LOCKED15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, for 15% off at Built.com. <clears throat> So let's talk, we've talked kind of the past. Uh, let's let's talk about the future a little bit. Uh, one of my questions was, who are you most excited to see in a blue jacket sweater next season? And again, I got a, a really good variety of responses. Uh, there was, you know, um, Elvis Musleekins, obviously. Uh, a couple of people said Patrick Laine. I agree. I think he's only going to get better. Um, a couple of people said Kent Johnson, which again I would agree with. Uh, I got Carol Marchenko, which was a really intriguing choice, and I don't know if that would have been my pick, but I am certainly excited to see him come over to North America. Um, I only got one vote for my pick, but uh, because I got such a, a variety of votes, I feel like I can uh, I could take this one and uh, claim it as my own. Um, Cole Sillinger. I think is my answer for who are you most looking forward to watching in a blue jacket sweater next season. I think he did uh, kind of like Andrew Peake, but in a different way. He did everything that was asked of him and more. Brad Larson tried to get rid of him, couldn't. He played in the top six for most of the season as an 18 year old, had 16 goals as an 18 year old. Uh, there are only like seven players in history to do that. Um, ever you know so he's he's looking like he's going to be a really really good player and we spent a bunch of time talking about Carl Sandra yesterday so I'm not gonna reiterate a ton of it but he might be the piece that I am most excited about in terms of longevity longevity in this league I think Ken Johnson's gonna make an impact I think he's gonna be super exciting I think Marchenko is gonna make an impact I don't know that either of them will have the impact on the game the way that Cole Sollinger will. Um, you know, they're both very good, very exciting players. Cole Sollinger is kind of a, a steadier player. He's more of an Oliver Bjorkstrand than Patrick Laine, I think. I think he has that uh, that instinct to be a Patrick Laine, but I think for me, and you could kind of see as, as the season got better, he started to take a little bit more of that centre awareness and to learn you know okay it's not all about specifically offense and defense it's about moving between the two you could see his transition game improve as the season goes and I personally am super excited about an entire summer of Cole Sollinger training as a Blue Jacket instead of as someone who might be going back to Medicine Hat who might be going to the USHL who might be going to the AHL he knows where he's going next season he's going to be a Blue Jacket next season and uh in the same way that I'm excited for Ken Johnson to get a full summer of training under his belt as a professional hockey player, I think Cole Sillinger is going to come back next season probably a little bit bigger, a little bit older, and a lot, lot better. And I'm super, super excited to see that. Uh, I think that's actually the last of the quote-unquote serious questions, and then I added some uh, some fun ones just for me. Um I guess, so the most fun media presence is one that I kind of picked thinking explicitly about Vladislav Gavrikov and the uh, Gavrikov helpline that the Blue Jackets have started running on social media, which you haven't, if you haven't seen, is a delight. Um, and then I got a bunch of really fun, really fun prompts or really fun answers to this. Uh, Jake Voracek, I suspected, would get a handful of votes because, you know, he is really good with the media. He won't take nonsense from anyone. Uh, Elvis Malikins is a delightful Instagram follow. He's always fun to talk to the media. You know, I always, one of my favorite Elvis moments this season was him dropping the F-bomb in a packed nationwide after his first win of the season. Um, and then again, I think this might be Katie, friend of the show. Uh, she said Sean Corrali, but specifically because he never rises to Portsline's bait, which I super agree with. I feel like Aaron Portsline um, has a way of, asking leading questions to try and 
get the players to say things to fit his story rather than the other way around. And Sean Corrali never really seems to rise to it. So uh, congratulations to Sean Corrali for answering the questions in a diplomatic and honest way without giving Portsline anything salacious to talk about. Um, my pick is still Gavrikov, but I do think that Sean Crowley is a really, really good sleeper pick there. Um, in a minute, we will finish off uh, with, again, some of the fun questions. There's no, not a ton of, of deep analysis in this. It's just a little bit of fun that I decided to have. So we're going to finish off that in just a minute. But first, I want to tell you about Bet Online. Because BetOnline is your number one source for all your betting stats and sports information. You can find all of the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's basketball playoffs, Major League Baseball, and this weekend's run to the Roses as the Kentucky Derby is back. They've also got NHL playoffs. They've also got NHL draft stuff, which is uh, much more exciting if, like me, you are following a team that is not in the playoffs right now. BetOnline.net has all of that for you to peruse at your leisure. They are your continued source for all your sporting wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action because Bet Online is where the game starts. So this is a, this is the next one is a question that I thought was pretty locked in as the answer. And in fact, I think I only got two that had the same the same vote. Uh, my personal favourite answer to this was uh, none of them are free of sin, which I suspect is, again, uh, a listener who is also a friend. Uh, Lou, I, uh, I appreciate you for that. I disagree, but I appreciate you for saying it. Um, a couple of people said Jake Voracek, uh, which I feel like is not necessarily best hair, but just best, like, beard hair combo um especially near the end of the season when he decided to cut his hair short but keep the beard kind of wild and free that was a really good look i thought andrew peak is an obvious choice with the flow he did kind of trim it midway throughout the season which was upsetting to me specifically um someone said patrick liner which is categorically wrong and i don't know who that was but uh i feel bad for you uh, and then someone said Jack Russellbeck, which was also extremely funny um, because he kind of looks a little bit like a uh, stalk of asparagus, especially when his hair gets a little bit long. But uh, sorry, that's that was extremely mean to, to poor Jack. I don't feel mean for saying that about Patrick Lyon. I think he would agree with me. There's a reason he wears hats all the time, you know, but uh, poor Jack Russellbeck. Sorry, I, I do feel bad about that. I will retract my stalk of asparagus comment. Uh, and say that he always is he's always smiling and looks like he's having a great time. So uh, good job, Jack. This does, again, lead into uh, best game day fashion, which the votes were split basically 50-50 between two people, and I don't think anyone will be surprised to hear the votes were split between Elvis and Patrick Laine. Um Elvis, I feel like, is more classically fashionable. You know, I feel like he has a lot of stuff that you could... You look at it immediately and you're like, yeah, that's a look. And then Patrick Lyon has a lot of stuff that you look at and you're like, uh, oh, ooh. And then you take a second look and you're like, actually, no, this is a capital L look TM. Um, you know, the I'm thinking, for example, the, um, the all green suit for St. Patrick's Day with the green glasses or the like purple turtleneck that he wore at the start of the season or he has this like... I think it's like a like a suede jacket with the blue and black kind of flower pattern on it. Uh, that's also just again a look. Um, so yeah, I I don't know who to pick between those two guys because I do think they are equally fashionable, but just in slightly different ways. Um, but they both turned up with set with semi regularity on uh, Sarah Sivian's power rankings of fashion each week. And uh, that's that's just correct. That's they should be on there every week. I think personally, um, we're going to finish off with uh, something that I kind of added in as a whim, and then asked my friend, like, "Am I missing anything?" And she was like, "You need to ask Best Dog if you haven't." And I was like, "Well, I thought about it, and now that you've said that, I'm going to add it." Uh, this was basically a runaway vote for Zach Grensky's. I th- think it's some kind of doodle mix uh he's called Bo uh, and he's he is very cute he is a very good dog uh, I was not expecting such a runaway 
answer to that. Um, honorable mentions do go to Gus Dyquist's uh, Golden Retriever, who was a star of the uh, the team picture day when they got all of the wives and kids and dogs, and he basically just lay down on the ice and refused to engage with anything, presumably because he was enjoying the peace and quiet for not being trapped in a house with three small children. Um, someone else said Brendan Gaunt's his tiny dog, which, again, I respect. Brendan Gaunt has this little fuzzy chihuahua thing. I don't necessarily like small dogs, but I do respect when hockey players have those tidy, fuzzy rat dogs. Um, no one said Kobe Muslikins, which was uh, upsetting to me personally, because I think he's a very, very good dog. The problem is a lot of the best dogs have been traded away. Like Easton Atkinson was such a good dog. Um, Scott Harrington has two French Bulldogs that are very, very good. Obviously, he's down in Cleveland at the minute. Um, I feel like I'm missing a bunch of really good team dogs. Um, mostly it's Easton Atkinson, though. He was uh, an extremely good and fluffy dog, and he would have been my pick for best dog, but without him there, I think. Consensus says Bo Wierenski. Uh, lots and lots of people voted for Bo, but I think uh, for me personally, uh, it has to be Kobe Moseleykins, honestly. Um, I do also have to give an honorable mention to Patrick Laine and his girlfriend and their tiny... Uh, like he's a Bernadoodle puppy called Teddy, and he's precious. Uh, and I suspect I may have now spent more time talking about team dogs than any other question on this poll, and I stand by that. Um, just to finish, I asked people who their current favorite Blue Jacket was, and again, I got a bunch of really fun answers. Uh, someone said Alva Bjorkstrand, there was a Jonas Corposalo, uh, someone said Boone, Sean Corrali, Cole Sillinger. Uh, someone said uh, Patrick Lyon, and also anyone from Columbus, which I support. We love our Columbus boys here, but in in past years, when I feel like you know it would have been easy to look at the team and go, oh well, everyone's favorite is going to be Felino or Bobrovsky. Kind of this this new look team, I think, has a little bit of something for everyone, and everyone has their favorites, and that's I think pretty pretty cool. So I uh, I enjoyed that. I'm not answering that because I don't know, and I should have thought about this before I started recording, and now I feel like I'm under pressure to pick a favourite, and they're all my favourites. You know, I love all of my children equally, um, except for Max Doby, but he's not on the team anymore. Oh, he does have a really good dog, though. That was the other thing. Orion Doby was a very good dog. Uh, Max Doby, I can leave or take, but uh, his service dog, Orion, was an extremely good dog. So uh, that's another another big loss in the best dog sweepstakes. Um just looking up and down the, the roster as kind of a, a knee-jerk reaction. No, I, can't, I don't know. I don't know who my favorite Blue Jacket is. Um, I'm going to have to think about this, and I will I will get back to you guys, and I will tell you the answer to this on, uh, on Monday's episode when I have given it a lot of thought because I am a fool who did not prepare an answer to this question uh, unt until right now because I, kept, I looked at the roster and I was like, oh, mm, Oh no, but there's oh no, mm, oh I love all of these boys, so I don't necessarily have an answer for that. But uh, all of our boys were good this season. Um, no one was a real disappointment, I don't think. And uh, that's kind of it for now for the uh, the end of the inaugural Locked On Blue Jackets end of season awards. Next week we are going to talk a little bit about um, some new boys. Uh, I've got Will Scouch of Scouching, and we're going to talk about Kirill Marchenko and also Mikhail uh, Pitya, whose name I am definitely butchering, and I do apologize, Mikhail, but uh, I will I will make sure to get that right before I talk to to Scouching about it. And uh, that's coming up next week. I've been Jay Foster. You can find me on Twitter at underscore Jacob Foster, J A K O B F O R S T E R. You can find this podcast at L O underscore Blue Jackets. If you have comments, questions, criticisms, you can email me at lockedonbluejackets at gmail.com. And until tomorrow, make sure you stay. Until tomorrow, we're not recording tomorrow. Until Monday, make sure you stay locked on. <laughs>